So what's up, world? Welcome to another special edition of I Mix What I Like right here at Black Power Media. Again, I'm Jared Ball. Some breaking news of sorts, uh, certainly of interest to me and those of us uh, within the Africana uh, and Black Studies worlds uh, that I wanted to do a quick short video on, and it's something that we'll continue to cover going forward. But uh, just in terms of the timing, wanted to get to it now. And uh, and, and as I said, we'll continue to, to watch as it develops. Uh, and I've already invited um, uh, one of the principals involved, so to speak, uh, to be invited uh, to the platform. So we'll see. But in, in, in any event, we'll continue to cover the story. So and that story is that Afrocentricity International cuts ties with Dr. Malefe Asante. Dr. Asante is, of course, a legend in Black studies and founder of, uh, leading advocate of what has been called uh, and coined by him Afrocentricity and Africology. As the letter, or as the press release statement that we're going to get into here in just a minute covers, there is a history of some debate around Dr. Asante claiming credit for the terminology, for the language, for the term Afrocentricity. P people have pointed out to Dr. Du Bois, W.E.B. Du Bois had used it uh, in the early 60s, uh, making reference to the term Afrocentricity or Afrocentric. Um, but in terms of a field or a subset of Black studies, it's clearly something that uh, Malefi Asante has championed and again coined and developed uh, as a subset within Black studies. For those who are not familiar, this is a huge figure. It's as big a figure, one of the most referenced scholars in Black studies, uh, some would say controversial scholars in terms of, again, the credit being taken for the, the term and the approach. For those of us who came up under this, the, the sort of uh, a wing of Africana studies led by Dr. John Henry Clark, we know that Dr. Clark had a very overt disagreement, like before the YouTube streets battles that we're, we're unfortunately somewhat accustomed to today, there were the very overt statements, speeches, presentations, writings uh, by Dr. Clark and a few others uh, critical of, of Malefi Asante. Uh, but nonetheless, Malefi Asante is, is a tremendous figure within Black studies. Again, uh, 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 and Afrocentricity has played a major role in lifting the consciousness of many in and outside of Black studies and the university. Uh, and for that, he is to be given credit. And I always appreciate his very base point that for African people, ancient Kemet or Egypt, known as it is to some, uh, should be as important to African people as Rome and Greece are civil in terms of civilization and history to European people. Let's have a look at this, this press release. And again, it's a story we'll continue to cover. For immediate release today, March 30th, 2022, Dr. Malefi Asante is one of the principal theoreticians who opened the way for a new domain of study and inquiry into African history and culture. The study of African life wherever we find ourselves is the first step toward the development in, in, of any ideology or philosophy that can successfully guide African people toward reclamation of our victorious destiny. The project Malefe Asante has consistently dedicated himself to is the development and expansion of the field of Black studies in the existing university systems throughout the world. Asante is undoubtedly one of the most impactful and influential leaders of the insurgent Black Studies movement in the United States over the past 60 years. The Department of Africology at Temple University is an example of his substantial contribution to the overall intellectual development of African people the world over, but it does not constitute the primary vehicle of our political movement toward African liberation from European or Asian domination wherever we find ourselves. Malefi Asante has stated, consciousness precedes unity. And as a means of raising consciousness, he has provided African people with a syst systematic theoretical approach to drawing knowledge from the deep well of African history and culture, known as Afrocentricity. By applying a disciplinary structure to Afrocentric theory, Asante has given us the blueprint to defend the Pan-Africanist intellectual movement from the hegemonic influences of, of the Western European and Arabian 
world. The objective of Pan-African unification has long been undermined by the diversity of ideological orientations that many African people have come to uphold as a result of the Ma'afa. While Afrocentricity should, in theory, serve as an instrument to alleviate this ideological sch schizophrenia within our movement, it is often rejected due to the presiding influence Malefi Asante wields over Afrocentric discourse within the pan-European academic system. The rejection of Asante, which led to the Afrocentric versus African-centered split among Pan-Africanist intellectuals, is rooted in a 50-year history of personal failures, hurtful betrayals, and ruined relationships that Asante's ego has left in the wake of a 50-year intellectual career. However, no substantive critique of Afrocentricity would reduce Afrocentricity to a cult of personality. The idea that Afrocentricity must be reduced to a personality rather than recognized, rather than recognized as a comprehensive system of, of ideas is parochial at best, and very few op opponents of Afrocentricity would apply the same reductive logic to ideas consistent with Adam Smith, Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, or Martin Luther. Ideas and philosophies must be evaluated by the guiding principles and assumptions that define them. By the way, it's interesting, that was a core part of the argument that Kwame Ture made in his classic debate against Malefi Asante in, in trying to determine what is more important, scientific socialism or Afro Afrocentricity to African people developing a, a radical pan-Africanism and freeing ourselves. And I just think, um, anyway, so that's just interesting that, that a similar argument appears here. Anyway, continuing, likewise, the framers of said ideas must also be judged by the guiding principles and assumptions they profess to uphold. They are far too, they are, there are far too many African people across the, Af the, the world who have been touched and moved to action once they have come to understand the ramifications of embracing Afrocentricity. And it is for this reason that Afrocentricity International must publicly disassociate ourselves with one of the co-founders of our organization and the most prominent voice in Afrocentric discourse, Dr. Malefi Asante. It is our position that Asante's rejection of race as the fundamental organizing principle for African people represents a betrayal of the Afrocentric intellectual tradition. Furthermore, his embrace of, of so-called Afrocentric futurism, Afrocentric queer theory, and Afrocentric humanism is a departure from the way Afrocentricity International understands the Afrocentric idea as originally written by Dr. Asante. Our initial concerns about Asante's ideological dev devolution were first raised after his glowing endorsement of Portuguese writer Ana Monteiro Ferreira's Demise of the Inhuman, which in hindsight was his first attempt at re reorienting his discourse towards humanism and away from race. Asante, showed, As Asante showered Ferreira with praise as his, as his champion from Europe for being bold enough to use Afrocentricity to ask whether or not there can be, be be a better, perhaps more human way to approach the 21st century. As fate would have it, Asante has now come up with the answer to his own question with the release of his latest text, Being, being Human Being, in 2021, where he's quoted as saying, we began this work with the intent to transform race discourses so that we slow the pace on de debating illusions and rather spend our time nudging the human community toward the idea of humanity. Thus, our subtitle is Transforming the Race Discourse, which speaks to the need to escape the entrapment of race itself. The falsity of race in biological terms has been demonstrated for decades now, yet it persists and many of us have been participants in the language of racial relations, race interactions, and racial disparities as a way of promoting the idea of a false reality." End quote. Co-authored by Dr. Asante and Dr. Na Dorothy Dove, uh, Asante goes as far as to argue that race has no place in scholarly or practical discourse, which makes us wonder if Dr. John Henry Clark should have led a movement for human studies rather than black studies. It appears as though Asante has embraced the idea that he can free himself of the illusion of race by magically believing that if we stop using racial terms and educate Europeans to be more human, i.e. anti-racist, the material results of European domination will disappear. This is not an intellectually sound conclusion, and it pains us to watch as the self-professed father of Afrocentricity enters the final stages of his intellectual career, suffering from the same ideological schizophrenia his medicine was created to cure. 
On matters of race, Afrocentricity International will continue to uphold the conclusions reached by scholars such as Elaine Locke more than a century ago. While we disavow the biological re reality of race, we recognize the need to use race as a political and cultural stratagem to improve the material conditions of the segment of humanity that remains the most negatively affected by its creation, Black people. Based on these and other irreconcilable contradictions between our organization and Malefi Asante's current po political and ideological trajectory, this final chapter of his intellectual life is not a chapter Afrocentricity International has entered is interested in co-authoring, for it represents an undoing of the Afrocentric idea as an instrument of African liberation. Either way, as an organization, we want to be we want it to be made abundantly clear that Afrocentricity International still serves as a vehicle for rescuing and reclaiming the traditions, practices, and customs that were once held sacred by Black people and shall once again be held sacred through the achievement of the African Renaissance. There's more in the statement that goes on to explain the history and background and philosophy of, Af of, of Afrocentricity International. I'll leave that uh, for you all to read on your own uh, and link to this in the show notes below, but just wanted to get this story out. Uh, and again, it is something that we will continue to follow up with here at BPM and certainly on our Mix What I Like. So definitely stick around and stay tuned. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and join the channel if you can, and support our work. Become a patron and get some access to some early exclusive content as well. And as Fred Hampton used to always say, or as Fred Hampton used to say to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace. Catch you next time.